in this video, we are going to graph this data set and find the equation that relates these two variables, temperature and length. And that's really wiggly, isn't it? Weird. Yeah, let's zoom back out. All right, so there's the data we're going to work with. And here is the graph paper on which I am going to graph it. So, looking at our data, we have to choose which direction to place this thing. And we can see, zoom in a little bit there, that the range of our x values is significantly larger than our y values. The y values run only from a little bit less than 1 and a little bit more than 1, so we don't need a whole lot of space there. Where our x values run from about negative 50 to about positive 250. So we have very large range. That is going to lead to us making this graph in the landscape position. So as I begin, I start here at the bottom. I'm going to look at my x scale first. I'm doing this because we have a range that runs from negative values to positive values. So the way I'm going to work this is I'm going to start all the way to the left and I'm going to first place my smallest value, which in this case is going to be negative 50. I'm then going to work out to the right, and I'm going to place my largest value, which is 250, as far out to the right as I can. So you can see this a little bit better. So, <clears throat> beginning at negative 50 to 250 out of the other end, this is a range of 300 degrees Celsius. I'm going to have to move up a little bit so that I have enough space to label and things, but um, I need to figure out how many divisions I have here so that I can set my scale. So I'm just going to count the number of boxes all the way across, zoom out so you can see me do that. that, that. It's 50 all the way across, but I'm not going to have enough space to do that, and plus, for the purposes of this video, I don't want it to work out very well. So what I'm going to do is start here with negative 50, and I'm going to go ahead and use 48. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use the fact that this is 48 across. Hopefully my head's in the video. Nope. Perfect. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and strike my x-axis. I'm going to go ahead and put 250 right there. So now I have actually set my horizontal scale from negative 50 to 200. This distance is 300 grabbing some scratch paper here so I can actually do some work. I'm going to take my 300 degrees Celsius and divide it up into 48 boxes. This is the scale that I'm going to work with. So I just need to find out what that means about each individual box. There's no real magic to this. I'm simply filling the space on the page. I find that we have 300 See that? 300 divided up into 48 pieces means that each individual box is 6.25 degrees C. Again, that's per box. So as I move across my x-axis, each box is 2.5. Well, looking at that 0.25, the number that jumps to mind is 4. Because if I multiply that by 4, I get a nice round number. So I'm going to look at, well, 6.25 times 4, what do I get? Well, that actually works out quite slickly, doesn't it? That's 25. So every fourth box is 25. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's 25. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's my 0. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so we've labeled it up all the way across the bottom. I now know where my y-axis is, so I'm going to go, yeah, the y-axis goes at zero on the x-axis. Now that I know where that is, I can go ahead and draw it in. So there's my zero. I now have an origin on my page. I now need to place my y-values. So. I'm going to employ a broken axis here because this data is so close together over such a small range 
if I didn't employ this, then the entirety of my graph would end up being over just a very small chunk of the total paper, and all of this would be blank. That's okay, but I would get a better image if I go ahead and spread out this axis. So I'm going to break this axis. You cannot put a break in the middle of an axis, but if you want to leave out values for good reason, okay? I wouldn't do this if I were close, right? If I were gonna leave out one through five and then go ahead and make a graph which ran from five to 15 or five to 20, that's, that's not really enough. But in this case, the graph wouldn't cover, the data wouldn't cover the graph very well unless I do this. So looking at my data, it runs from just under one up to just over one. I want to make this break very obvious, okay? Because I'm gonna start my graph here at 0 0.9. So I'm leaving off 0 to 0.9, and I'm going to run up to just 1.1, and I'm gonna stick that way up here at the top. Now, just like I did on my horizontal axis, I need to find out how many boxes is this. Okay, so 32 boxes. I'm taking a range, which is only, my largest value is 1.1, my smallest value is 0.9. So my total range is actually only 0 0.2 meters, dividing up 32 boxes. 0.2 divided by 32 tells me that each box is 0 0.0025. This is really tiny. This is part of why I chose to do a broken scale, so that each box would be only worth a little bit, and the differences we see would be exaggerated. So, I'm again seeing my 0.25 out at the end, so I'm going to look at some multiple of 4. If I multiply this by 4, I'm going to get 25 again, which works out quite well. So times 4, and I find that every 4 boxes is equal to 0.025. I'm now going to use that to label up my graph. Okay, so now we have our axes all labeled up. We're going to title this guy. This graph is going to be temperature or length versus temperature. Now we have title. We're now ready to start plotting our points. On this kind of a graph, we have a little bit of a peculiarity. So, to wrap up, here we have titled and set our axes. 